Okay, let's get started. Now it's time to really let the cat out of the bag. But before we get into that, a little bit of background. When I started my astronomical imaging journey back in, I think it was December of 2020, January of 2021, um, the telescope I wanted was the Red Cat 51, which I have here in the bag. <clears throat> At the time, it was not available. There was supply chain constraints, all kinds of stuff. So I went the next size up and I purchased this C, um, William Optics Xenostar 61, 360 millimeter focal length. Uh, bit of great telescope for imaging, in particular for me as a newbie on the journey uh, to learn with. <clears throat> but this is really the one I wanted. So, uh, you know, today's kind of a special day in many respects. One, I finally got the telescope, which I thought would have been the right one for me being a beginner to begin with. And, and now I have it. And uh, again, this being a 360 millimeter um, focal length, and this being 250 millimeter uh, focal length. So clearly both these scopes are designed for wide field uh, astronomical imaging. And um, over the two years that I've had the uh, Xenostar 61, or I'll just say Z61 Mod 2, uh, definitely learned a lot. Uh, as a beginner, there's so much I didn't know. Um, and one of the things I learned along the way that I wanted to go even wider field than the Z61 could deliver. I think there's something to be said for imaging objects where you could have multiple objects in uh, the field of view within that image. Uh, and even in the uh, video I made the other day when I was talking about, okay, you know, I'm gonna sell this and I'm gonna use that money. Maybe I go with a Hyperstar uh, V4 for my Celestron Edge HD8. And then I said, okay, maybe I would go with a refractor instead of the Hyperstar. And I kind of did some pros and cons. And those type of videos are good for me. I, I, I really appreciate anyone that watches my videos because a lot of time they are just stream of consciousness and they're not really rehearsed. But what they do for me is I can then look back at what I said in my videos and I can listen to the argument that I'm making and I can say, oh man, you're full of BS there or, you know, okay, that's a good point or wow, yeah, we should think about that a little bit more. Uh, and one of the things I said in that video when I was talking about the Hyperstar V4, it would give me a 300 and 90 uh, millimeter focal length if I use that on my Celestron Edge HD 8. And I, I think after I kind of talked about I said, but I, I would like to go wider, I think I said, but it is what it is. And maybe I'll dig out that clip and I'll put it in here or something. So, you know, I made the decision to go with another refractor. There are many things about the Hyperstar that are probably uh, stellar uh, attributes and features and everything, but there were things like having to do sky flats that I really didn't want to get into. And then you kind of have the cables coming off the uh, camera because it's mounted on the front where the secondary mirror would go and all that. But I just kind of watched that video over and over that I made and then thought about it and I said, no, I, I want to go I want to go with a, another refractor for a wide field, and I really want to get the telescope I wanted when I wanted to start that journey. And so this is that telescope. So why don't we take a look at what's in the box or the bag? As you should say, we'll let the, we'll let the cat out of the bag. And, um, you know, one thing about the William Optics scope Maybe you pay a little bit of a premium for them, but this uh, Xenostar Z61 held up very well. It's a, it's a fine 
uh, scope, well constructed. Now I haven't used other scopes in the similar price points, so I can't make really any comments about that. But uh, I've been very pleased with the quality of William Optics. So again, I'm you know have another William Optics uh, product here. So here's uh, the inspection card, and I think uh, and warranty. And um, I'll try not to lose my uh, my bag. And then let's see what's here. Okay, here it is. So let's kind of open this up. And there's some features about this uh, telescope uh, that I wish I would have had on the uh, Z61. And let me just put this to the side. First of all, it's sometimes the little things like this uh, graduated uh, 0 to 360 degree uh, dial, which will help you when you want to manually rotate, take some of the trial and error out of it. Uh, so I like that. And actually this um, dovetail looks almost identical to the original dovetail that came with my uh, Z61. Um, And of course, as to be expected, a Botanoff mask uh, is included in the lens cap. And if you're not familiar, uh, so you, you have the Botanoff mask. Um, great for manual focusing, but I plan to put a ZWO electronic autofocuser onto this, and that's why I bought this additional item uh, that will mount on here. I don't know which way it goes, but uh, I think it goes something like that. And then there'll be a belt or something. So there is a there is a drive uh, belt and an attachment that would go on the um, on the EAF, so that kind of have a geared drive. So I'll have uh, future videos about how I build this out and everything and share with you. And then the um, and so maybe it goes like I'm not quite sure which way it goes. Probably like this. And then I think uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to put my uh, Uniguide 32 uh, guide scope on here, but I'll have to find a way to attach my guide scope, uh, which I was running on here. And uh, I don't know. Let's see. If, yeah, I think I'm going to be able to put my guide scope in here. Uh, I have the uh, William optics Uniguide 32 and I'm using the ZWO ASI 120 mm mini uh, for that and then let's see focuser tension so I should probably I should probably read the instructions and I'm probably going to break something here Okay, so you can see already, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so maybe we'll make this a shorter video. But um, this is my uh, new wide field solution. Uh, I wanted to go wider than the 360 millimeter. Um, when I didn't know what I didn't know, at the beginning of my journey, I thought, okay, man, you got to put that object and you got to fill the whole frame. And, uh, you know, as I was imaging and I was working with various tools, telescopius and others and framing assistant and uh, Nina, and uh, I thought, you know, if I could fit two 
objects, like I am going to image the North American Nebula. So while I shot the Pelican Nebula with this, I will be able with the 250 millimeter get the North America Nebula and the Pelican Nebula in the same field of view. And I think when you could put multiple objects in your, in your field of view without having to do mosaics, I think it just gives, in my mind, or at least to me, a little bit more of a feeling of just how expansive or how, how big space really is. So I'm going to go and uh, re-image like um, the heart, nebula, I'll redo Andromeda, uh, not necessarily that there'll be multiple objects in that one, but I will uh, re-image uh, some of the items that I've already imaged. And there's some new ones like uh, the Crescent Nebula and um, the Jellyfish Nebula and those type of things where I can kind of get a wider field of view and, and more interesting objects in the frame. So anyway, I'm going to spend some time and get familiar with this scope so I don't damage it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get any first light through it tonight, although, you know, it's crystal clear right now, but the clouds seem to roll in around 7 or 8 o'clock nine o'clock at night and even though my backyard is constrained I think there might be an object uh, that I could maybe um, I know I can get a uh, polar alignment done out of my backyard the trees don't interfere or the two-story buildings don't uh, but if there is an object then well, maybe I'll just run some first light through it um, as you'll see in the future videos I'm gonna run with a um, five uh, position filter wheel and I will use my ASI 294 MM Pro uh, camera on this. It's a micro four third sensor. Uh, yeah, I would love to have an APS-C uh, sensor to get an even wider field, uh, but I don't really have the money to pick up one of those cameras right now. So I'm gonna work with what I have. But anyway, the cat's now out of the bag. This is the William Optics uh, Red Cat 51. Uh, it's a very exciting day for me and I'm looking forward to uh, going even wider. Now I know some people are using uh, camera lenses like the Rokinon 135. Askar's got some like 200 or 230. I thought about going in that direction. Yeah they're maybe F 2.8 or something. This is a four, uh, focal ratio of uh, f4.9, so it, this is a f5.9, uh, so a little bit faster. Um, but oftentimes when you get the uh, use a lens, my understanding, and at least from my days as a terrestrial photographer, oftentimes for the best uh, um, quality image, you got to stop down a bit. And uh, so now you're maybe at 5.6 or something. You're not really at the uh, 2.8 or whatever. So I didn't really want to take the journey with lenses yet. Um, I felt this design here, uh, Petsval uh, lens design, uh, it's going to give me a little bit better optical image quality than the Z61. Uh, had a little bit of chromatic uh, aberration with the uh, Z61 from time to time, so I'll be very interested to see how this handles uh, the imaging. Do I have any chromatic aberration and those, those type of things. So anyway, um, that's about it. A very exciting day. I finally have the scope I always wanted. I've got two plus years more knowledge. I better understand how to use this scope to get the optimum performance uh, out of my data collection um, efforts. I'm much farther along over these two years in being able to process images. I use PixInsight. So I'm a lot more knowledgeable than I was originally when I bought my first telescope. But as you find in this journey, there's always so much more to learn. So uh, if you uh, are interested in the Red Cat 51, you might want to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell because I will be 
producing content specifically around the uh, Red Cat 51 and I'll be sharing the images and maybe I'll even be able to do some side by side between the two, uh, two telescopes and those type of things. So, all right, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. We've got uh, Hurricane Hillary down on the western uh, waters off of Mexico that's supposed to maybe hit landfall in Baja on Saturday and then work its way up maybe into the San Diego area and poss possibly some flooding in particular in the area where I like to go image from Landers California and uh, some of the rainfall estimates I'm seeing is like 3.8 inches in six hours that would be a lot of uh, water for the south there to handle and probably be some flooding and those type of things so uh, with this much moisture in the air, I'm not sure when I'm really going to be able to get an opportunity to go out and uh, image with this. Uh, but when I do, you'll see the results in a future video. In the meantime, I might produce a couple of videos about uh, how I'm putting it together and those type of things. So, again, thanks for dropping in and thanks for taking the time to watch the videos. Uh, I always like to hear from people that watch the videos. Tell me if I'm doing a good job, not doing a good job. If I say something wrong, or if you have a better idea, uh, please take the moment to drop a comment. Comments are important. And other than that, I hope for clear skies wherever you may be in the world. Till next time.